Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today we're going to be looking at the AFM or DOD collapsible lifters, how they work, some of the reasons why they might fail, some of the things that you might be able to do to change it, and also I have a full video series on deleting the system. This would be a physical delete where we're actually taking the collapsible lifters out, replacing them with regular lifters, and uh, people ask all the time, how about just plugging in the tune so it doesn't ask it to deactivate? Uh, ultimately, you still will have lifter failures for a few reasons you'll see in the videos. So this is a push rod engine, which means the camshaft is in the center of the block, and then you have lifters and push rods that are going upwards to the valves on top. So this is a traditional lifter here. It has a roller on the bottom, and the roller will ride on the camshaft. So the push rod goes into the top of the lifter, and as it rolls on the camshaft, as it goes up on the camshaft, it will push this lifter upwards. As it pushes the lifter upwards, it's moving the rockers back and forth, which are opening and closing the valves. So check the video description. I have the whole teardown and assembly of this, so you'd see how it works if you watch that. So here is a regular lifter here, and it has the roller on the bottom. Now here is the AFM or DOD lifter and as you can tell they look very similar other than that huge spring at the top and so the idea is these lifters are supposed to collapse to deactivate cylinders that are not in use for better fuel mileage if you look at this side there's a little hole that oil can go into and as the pressure it needs to be about 22 psi worth of oil pressure goes into that hole it will then uh, close some locking pins and it allows this, this lifter to collapse on itself. So this process is all controlled by the valve lifter oil manifold. So that's this plate here. And looking at the bottom, you'll see four different solenoids that basically are electronically activated to open and close. And it sends oil pressure down into these holes that you see for half of the cylinders. So when that oil pressure goes down, it then... Uh, will basically trigger this lifter to collapse by the oil pressure going into the hole that's on the side. So as you see, it's solid right here, but if we add some pressure, this would be oil, but uh, 22 PSI worth of pressure will then allow this lifter to collapse. When many of these lifters are brought in for testing, it's found that the lifter itself is typically not bad unless you do see it in that locked closed position where the pins have failed. And so that means it's a problem more with the timing event or with uh, the whole VLOM system's contamination, low oil pressure, uh, other underlying issues. Other causes that might trigger this is you have a little filter in here for that manifold that needs to be cleaned. So if you have contamination in that, if you have a leak in that VLOM somewhere um, or sludge in the engine, low oil pressure, any of those things can cause this to not work properly. So it will activate as oil pressure is being pressed into that hole. When the oil pressure stops by the VLOM closing the oil off of that passageway, it will lock again. So the system is designed to be at the base circle of the cam at the bottom when it's activating and deactivating so you don't notice a difference. On the ramp up period as well as the peak, it should not be having the activation or deactivation. And that is what could also cause it to be uh, keeping these stuck closed is if that activation or deactivation happens at the ramp up or the peak cycle. And so it should only be activating and deactivating there at the base circle at the bottom of the cam. So you can have one of those mistime switching events, as it's called, where it doesn't do it at the right time. And that can be from what we said before, the different reasons why it would not collapse. And you can also have the system fail on its own from the guide pins themselves, those locking pins, as they wear out. Now, there is a way to delete the system, which involves taking the cylinder heads off and putting in a new camshaft, everything. So check the video description. I'll show you the full walkthrough for that. And so it has to do with these little plugs. And what you're going to do is put each of these plugs down into those passageways and tap them in. So now oil pressure doesn't go down there, but you're also replacing uh, the collapsible lifters with regular ones, one just like the other ones that are already in the engine. So uh, that's a process that you can do. And I have the full walkthrough for that. So with the mistime switching events, or if you have a collapsed lifter, you can really beat up that roller 
on the lifter and it's going to destroy the camshaft as well. Here's what two of these look like. You can see how much taller the one on the left is as it should be and how beat down the one on the right is. This one was actually on a traditional lifter uh, as well. And so looking at the camshaft lobe, you can see how scarred up this is. So uh, you need a new camshaft as well. And so as you see the ridges on each side, this camshaft lobe should look like the others, nice and smooth. And you can see it's worn a pattern in there that uh, has really grooved it down into the middle. So this was apparent by a little squeaking sound that you would hear. So that's the bad lifter. Otherwise you'll get a knocking or tapping sound uh, if you have the issue with the other AFM. Now you can see lines in this too. Those lines are pieces of metal from the bad one transferring and making its way through the other ones. So new camshaft, uh, new lifters, everything was involved for, uh, for this process. But you can see here, as this is riding down into that little channel that it's grooved its way into, that both uh, the lifter roller itself and the camshaft lobe were getting torn apart. And so it does require a whole new camshaft and new lifters in this case. So these push rods otherwise come out to be in the same length when everything is how it's supposed to be working, other than when the cylinder is asked to shut down for fuel economy, that lifter will collapse uh, and basically allow that push rod to not be opening and closing those valves. It's being absorbed into the lifter. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please check the video description. I have the playlist for the full teardown of this, as well as all the other videos that I've made on the Yukon. As always, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. Thanks, guys.